And we've seen that if you have a loop, any loop in space, which might be a loop of wire, might not be, and you go all the way around it and add up the electric fields pointing in the same direction that you're going in, that's the electromotive force, the total voltage around the loop, that will in general equal zero if you have nothing changing uh, because you can't get curly electric fields out of a distribution of charges. But if there is a changing magnetic field going through the loop, then instead of being zero, it's equal to the integral over the area of the magnetic flux, which is the magnetic field times the normal vector dA, but the rate of change of that, d by dt of all that. Now that's very useful for working out all sorts of things. You can use it to measure changes in magnetic field. As you'll see, we'll use it to make transformers, we'll use it to generate power. But there is a problem, and the problem is that typically, for most wire loops and typical magnetic fields, this electromotive force is very small. So let's think about that. What is a typical, practical, everyday magnetic field? Well, we might use the Earth's magnetic field as an example. The magnetic field of the Earth is around 10 to the minus 5 Tesla. So a bar magnet or electromagnet will be stronger, some other things will be weaker, like interference effects. So that gives us a rough measure of how big a magnetic field is. A sort of practical wire loop that you might want to have in a mobile phone or a sensor might have, I don't know, an area of one square centimetre, which is 10 to the minus four square metres. So let's say you have this magnetic field and it changes, because we need the rate of change with respect to time, let's say it doubles in, I don't know, 10 seconds. In that case, dB by dt is going to be 10 to the minus 5 over 10, which is 10 to the minus 6. And let's say that goes through a 1 square centimetre area. That's going to give us an electromotive force, which is a voltage of um, the area times the change of magnetic field, which is going to be 10 to the minus 6 times 10 to the minus 4 equals 10 to the minus 10 volts, 0.1 nanovolts. So that ballpark is what you're talking about. Uh, if you've got typical magnetic fields and typical size loops, you're talking about voltages that are absolutely tiny. Quite measurable. This is very easily measurable with modern equipment, but it's not going to drive a dynamo or power an electric car or anything like that. So to make this whole magnetic changing magnetic field causes electric field stuff useful, we're going to need to make it much bigger. And luckily, there are two pretty easy ways to do things. One way is instead of using a single wire loop with the area of one square centimetre or whatever, we could have multiple loops. So let's say we have something that looks like What happens if you have a changing magnetic field going through this? Let's say you have n loops, each with the same area A. Well, in this case, you can pretty much assume, because they're all close together and all the same size, that the magnetic flux to every one of them is the same. Therefore, the rate of change of the magnetic flux to any one of them is the same. So the electromotive force around one and the second and the third and the fourth will all be the same. And as they're all one after another in series, the voltages will add up. So in this case, the electromotive force will be, as usual, a d magnetic field by d time. But now it'll also be multiplied by n, because there are n loops, each of them is contributing the same thing. So if you have 100 loops, you can get 100 times the voltage, which sounds very useful. And indeed it is. So that's one technique. There is another which is to use the amplifying effects of something like iron. You may remember that if you have a, a chunk of iron, it's got all these atoms in it, each of which is a fetchedly little magnet, and generally speaking, they're going to be randomly orientated. The magnetic moments are going to be pointing all over the place. But if you apply a magnetic field to it, it's a strong enough magnetic field, it will tend to make them all line up. So each of these little atomic magnets, 
more little domains and uh, will tend to line up in the same direction. And that means in, as well as the magnetic field due to whatever's applying it outside, you also get the magnetic field due to all these things lining up inside, which can give you an absolutely massive boost. So let's combine these two. What we find is the best way to get a big effect is to have a, a bar of something like soft iron, then with lots of wires closely wrapped around it to get as many large enough N as possible around it. And something like that can give you drastically higher voltages and electromotive forces in response to a given change in magnetic field.